Welcome everyone to the last AI theater presentation at RSNA 2019. My name is Tobias and I'm happy now to present you how every radiological read can contribute to an AI-powered future by seeding power food for AI. When I say we, I have also my colleague AJ with me, who will take over the software demonstration within the next 20 minutes. Let us start over with an initial statement we would like to do. We at Mint, we are convinced high quality labeled data are the future of healthcare. And let me show you now in the next 20 minutes what we mean by saying this. Let us start over in considering the today's status quo in radiology reading workflow. Currently you have three different instruments. You have the PAX viewer to view the images. You have guidelines, criteria, classification that you should consider for specific reading tasks. And you have your reporting system in which you dictate your results. This approach has some, quite some advantages. So those, this approach is quite fast and speed and efficiency is very important for you. And you can be very flexible in doing your report. But there are also some kind of disadvantages. For example, a very big disadvantage is that you have non-structured, non-labeled, non-machine readable data in creating a report like this. Now, in addition to this um, workflow, in the last years, a lot of AI requests pop up. For example, you say, I need support by automatism to find and classify findings. You might also say, I should know all possible clinical consequences, like tipping points. I should have all images available to read the case properly. I should know all relevant aspects of the patient history. I should know the question to be answered relevant for the clinicians. And finally, I should have re all related comparable cases available. Now, doesn't matter what kind of, of, what kind of approach you're now taking to tackle those requests under the umbrella of AI. What, what, what those approaches combine each other is they all require data. For example, knowledge modeling or machine learning all require data, but in the current workflow, you do not generate structured data. So there's a high need for structured labeled data to enable, for example, knowledge modeling and machine learning to tackle those requests. The big question is now, how can we come to those data? Actually, there are two different options. Option one would be structure the data after it has been collected in an unstructured manner. So currently there are some kind of technologies out there, like NLP technologies, that take over the unstructured reading you generate and um, um, based on this it um, converted to structured data. But maybe option two might be much more um, reasonable, that maybe you structure the data in the moment you generate your information. And actually this is the approach we at Mint Medical with our software Mint Lesion uh, uh, are going, and I would like to show you how we do this. What is special about our software platform Mintletion? Compared to the current approach in radiology, we try to combine all three instruments, image viewer, reporting, and guideline in one platform. So guiding you as a radiologist through a very specific reading task, like for example, we have it here on the screenshot, like a lung staging case, asking you all relevant questions in the template next to the image viewer, and in this way we create structured data. So structured data could also be used to generate automatically a PDF report out of the system while doing the read. In doing this, we are applying artificial intelligence, having knowledge modeling and machine learning implemented. And the big aspects to consider in this, uh, in this approach is that we ensure criteria conform reading and reporting, that we do also have a read to report approach. And this is also quite important when you apply AI. Just imagine when you have an AI-suggested lesion, but do you, you don't agree with the suggestion. So you maybe you dismiss this lesion, and the, reason, the lesion won't be part of the report. But the system learned that you dismissed this lesion and is able now to improve the algorithm over and over over time. You also have the opportunity to configure reading templates. So there might be some kind of template owner or medical champion into your institution who's allowed to change questions within your template. And last but not least, in this approach, we generate longitudinally connected, labeled, structured, machine-readable data that you can use to train AI. Let's now have a look on the current available um, reading templates that we have already available in Mint. 
So we apply templates for different use cases. You can use Mint for clinical routine, for screening, restaging, and therapy response assessment in routine. But you can also apply our approach in clinical trials, for example, doing your clinical trial site treat, applying the most important criteria. And of course, the most famous one is Rhesus 1.1. But you can also use this approach of a guided radiological lead for research, where we are able to support you in skimming radiomics parameter over time. I will now hand over to AJ, who will show you how the colorectal staging is performed in MINT, as well as the Rhesus 1.1. Thanks, Tobias. So, like he was just mentioning, we at MINT Medical are taking the burden of performing the assessment off of the radiologist and allowing the system to guide you through that process with a step-by-step -step interactive interface prompting you with questions to answer or measurements to make or classifications. And in this way, right off the bat, in the first time you do the assessment, capturing structured data. So let's see how this works in the context of doing a colorectal uh, cancer staging using TNM8 and SR guidelines. So the radiologist starts off by telling the software he wants to start capturing a primary tumor. Then the software asks him to first define the location of the said tumor and then prompts him to make the measurement to classify that. The software gives him the correct tools to make this measurement and allows the radiologist in one, uh, uh, one action capture more than enough data. For example, in this case, we have not just the long axis, but the area, density, and first and second order texture parameters for radiomics. I go further and perhaps measure things like the um, craniocardial length as well as the distance to the anocutaneous line. The system further prompts the radiologist to answer things like the circumferential invasion with this interactive graphic. In this way, every reader performs the same kind of assessment, generating the same kind of structured data. And as I keep answering these questions, like right now about the infiltration, the application is automatically generating the result. So you can see up there that it's calculating the T stage to be T2 because of the way I have described the infiltration. More details can be captured to further strengthen your data. And yeah, once I'm ready to move on, for example, I can go to answer some of the remaining questions in this context and then move on to the next area, for example, the uh, regional lymph nodes. Same as before, I can go through the images when I find something that I want to evaluate, I will now prompt the system to help me with this. So I say, I've found a regional lymph node. I start by making the measurement. It gives me the correct tool, in this case, a bi-dimensional measurement tool. I classify the location and then move on to uh, describe some of the characteristics of this uh, lymph node. And in this way, the system will tell me if it's suspicious or not and simultaneously calculate the end category. So we're taking the burden off of the radiologist. You don't have to remember those hundreds of pages and tens of different criteria. You can manually override them as we do now here for the metastatic disease. I just say it's M0, and the system automatically derives the final stage, in this case, 3A. But it's not a black box. It's always telling me why it's doing the classifications that it is doing. And once I approve the read, apart from this machine-readable structured data, I'm also uh, generating a comprehensive clinical report that I can send to the referring physician, complete with diagrams, an overall assessment summary, and individual details for all the primary lesions as well as regional lymph nodes. The second page of the report also contains graphical uh, snapshots of each of these measurements with the numbers below them, so it's very easy to see what was measured and where. So we can, this way, allow you and empower the radiologist to first and foremost ease his workflow, take the burden off, and simultaneously generate a wealth of data without an extra necessary workflow. Let's take a look at how this can be extended to clinical trial side treats in the context of doing a Rhesus 1.1 uh, assessment. Same as before, I'm going through the case. I find a target lesion. I select the target lesion category. The application will prompt me with the correct tool. But actually, I'm going to use the semi-automated volumetric tool. All I have to do is identify the lesion and define a threshold, and the application will now segment that lesion in 3D for me, and capturing not only the long axis on the correct slice, but volume, texture, density as well. Let's do that for a second one. So I click on the plus again, and select the tool that I want. 
click in the middle, define a rough threshold, and let the application do the segmentation automatically. But you might not want to use this tool for all uh, the measurements. So we have a lot of different varieties. Um, so let's use a different tool, a 2D ROI tool, like similar to the one that we did for the colorectal case previously. So I just click around the boundary of the lesion, performing a contour um, around the periphery. And again, the application will find the right length for me. And here as well, this is a way to ensure consistent measurement of the long diameter across different readers uh, in, a, in a clinical trial. But if I put that as a target lesion, Mint is now telling me that I've put more than two target lesions in the same organ, which is not allowed by Resist 1.1. And here as well, we ensure that the data you're generating is, is, is uh, of high quality. So I can drag and drop one of those into non-target, and I have completed my baseline assessment. Let's take a look at how this would uh, um, work when I do a follow-up. When I open the case, Mint assists me by bringing the previous time point and all the lesions I've measured and synchronizing that with the current time point. It prompts me with the location where the lesion will be now, and I can perform the measurement with these smart tools. Again, I'm capturing not only the long axis, but radiomics. You get the gist of it by now. So in this way, in a matter of minutes, not only have I completed my rhesus assessment, but I've made my data future-proof to be able to analyze this from a different perspective at any time retrospectively. Let's take a quick look at this report as well. Here, Mint is generating, using all that data, of course, it takes the long axis only and gives me the relevant Rhesus 1.1 evaluation. So the time point response, target sum, things like that is calculated, but it's providing a lot of other useful graphics, for example, a stacked area chart that I can use for my tumor board. The report itself is also really comprehensive. So the first page contains a table which shows you each of the lesions and how they progress over time along with the analysis that it has uh, generated. That stacked area chart also enables the radiologist to determine if there are mixed responses to the target lesions uh, in a very quick look, just by looking at the graph. The next page of the report contains a line chart, which shows you how the target sum has progressed over time. And this as well is really useful to determine therapy decisions, because you might have a time point which is a stable disease, but looking at the trend, you might want to have the patient stay on the um, the treatment for longer. And of course, all these snapshots, isometrically scaled and stacked side by side, allows any reader to have a quick visual analysis and an overview of the patient's case. So with that, Mint Lesion really allows you to generate structured data in one flow, in one workflow, and enables you and empowers you to be future-proof. So Tobias, I think you can take it from here. Thank you very much, AJ. What we've seen here right now, it was two use, uh, use cases or showcases to apply our template-based structured and assisted reporting. And let's now consider this within one course of disease for one patient. So we could imagine that we might have a starting point with a colorectal staging. Then we might have a first-line therapy, but this therapy might not be successful, so the physicians decide to make a second-line therapy. For each time point of assessment, Mint offers a perfect support, a template-based support guiding you through and generating a report, but also combining all this information, you have a, a data stream of the whole history of this patient case with all oncological data. Let's now jump in and have a look on one single lesion that we highlighted in here. And this also shows the potential and the um, high, or huge potential for you in radiology. What we're doing here, we combine three different dimensions. We combine the image-based information like size, like volume, density, and all the radiomics parameters together with additional annotations we ask you to do in the template, like for example, the liver segment eight, but also we have the guideline context that this liver lesion we see here was a metastasis in TNM rectum staging and is now a target lesion in, TN, uh, in Rhesus 1.1. So again, you generate with your data, with your clinical routine data, um, real-world evidence that you can use for cancer research. Let's now focus on the Mint Medical's um, artificial intelligence approach. We believe that the combination of knowledge modeling and machine learning is reasonable to tackle all these AI requests from the very beginning. For example, for some of those requests, machine learning is not necessary especially for the clinical consequences or clinical pathways, this is something we can model directly in the application. 
For other requests, of course, machine learning might be um, very much of help. A very important item we would like you to understand is the data we are providing with Mint is powerful for AI. You can extract those data and you can train your algorithms with the Mint data, building up some more and more automatism in your workflow. And this is something we already did right now. So we jump to the next example. We have already now integrated a machine learning algorithm that was developed by us by using Mint data of a corporation partner providing us those data. And just give you an example how this looks like. This is our one example where we do one measurement in one time point, in this case in follow-up two time point, just clicking in, cycling out with our CME automatic volume tool, and then performing this read, the measurement is also be populated to all time points in future. Not only in future, but also back to baseline. So we populate in both directions to help you to automatically identify those lesions. This is our first AI use case, and of course, having established this volumetric measurement tool, we also again have all image-based parameters like the radiomics parameters automatically as a side product available in your Mint database. And of course, also some screenshots that you can provide for clinical partners. But we also work with external partners to include external machine learning algorithms. And this is another and last example we would like to show you. We now have developed algorithms together with the Royal Marsden Hospital in London. They are providing us an automatic bone disease detection for advanced prostate cancer. So let's have a look on here. This is now an AI-driven vendor mutual automated quantification of bone disease on whole body MRI. And the read starts in a way that we already have some pre-populated annotation of lesions. You can click those lesions, and of course you can change it, and you can also then annotate those lesions. For example, you can say this should be my target lesion. If you ch jump in, you see a lot of image-based information that is automatically captured by the AI in the, uh, in the pre-processing. But in addition, you have also, again, the Mint template uh, helping you to annotate much more information to this case. So in doing this, again, with every click you make, you generate structured data, and those data could also be used for visualization of the therapy response over different time points, and also in generating these nice graphs and reports that you can provide to your clinical partners. I hope we were able to show you our approach in radiology. I hope we were able to show you how important we think structured data are to apply AI in future. And we would like to thank you very much for being with us today. And we wish all you safe travels home and hope to see you next year at RSMA 2020. Thank you very much.